Hey, welcome to this video on how to increase neuroplasticity. We're going to talk about seven ways to increase your neuroplasticity. And this is a phrase you might have heard about. It's the brain's ability to essentially change and adapt. And the whole nervous system can rewire itself depending on the environment, depending on the actions you take. And we'll talk about uh, six and seventh ways, which don't even involve you doing much at all. You don't have to be taking in new information for your brain to change. First, what is neuroplasticity? You can think about your brain as this connection of 85 billion cells called neurons on one level. And there's also 85 billion support cells called glial cells. Glial comes from the Latin uh, glia for glue. These neurons are wired together. You can imagine uh, two neurons. And if one neuron fires, and the other one fires soon afterwards, that's called spike time dependent plasticity, then yeah, they wire together more tightly. There's a the classic phrase you might've heard, neurons that fire together, wire together, and truly they wire together more tightly. There's also new connections that can be formed in the brain. There are new neurons that can be grown, especially in the hippocampus, and that's called neurogenesis. So there's many ways that neuroplasticity takes place and it happens on different levels, on the network level and the cellular level. And there's ways that we can enhance or increase the likelihood that the brain will change. The first way is through sustained focused intention. When you pay attention to something, and especially if you're highly motivated and you're interested in what you're focusing on, you're telling your brain that there's something important there, that it needs to learn, that it needs to adapt. Research has found that through the, the context, the time, and the motivation and in attention that goes into something can enhance your neuroplasticity. Second way to make it more likely your brain will change is actually through movement. Exercise was shown to increase brain-derived neurotropic factor, which is related to neuroplasticity on a genetic level. And also through balance, for example, yoga, where you can put yourself, put your body in a position where it's almost on the verge of falling. And this, uh, it was shown, puts your brain into a state of heightened learning. The third way is through newness, through a fresh experience, novel environment. You're basically putting your brain into a situation where it's not familiar and it, it's also in a heightened state of uh, learning and exploration. So it's no surprise that enriched environments um, are shown to be associated with neuroplasticity. The fourth way is through psychedelics. And the research is still coming out on this. There's a lot of research um, that's using animal studies that relate uh, psychedelics to increased neuroplasticity. And I'm not encouraging anything legal. We don't actually know the exact doses that are required. Or for example, whether a microdose could also increase neuroplasticity. The research is still coming out, but it seems like in those early studies on animals, uh, neuroplasticity is occurring, especially in the neocortex. And the fifth way is through fasting. Intermittent fasting, for example, is when you constrict the time window of your eating. So you would have no calories outside of a certain window. Say you'd eat, eat within eight hours, all of your meals, and then for 16 hours of the day, you would fast. The last two ways of increasing neuroplasticity are unique from the first five we talked about. First five are what we could categorize as activity dependent plasticity. That means that you're interacting in some way, way with the environment, or in the case of enriched environments, this could be experience dependent plasticity, but you're still, there's some kind of new information coming in. The sixth way to actually increase neuroplasticity is through sleep. It was found in one study that the brain continues to learn uh, new skills and in fact can improve a task by up to 35% just by sleeping without new information coming in or needing to repeat the task more. Simply giving ourselves the time to rest, that's actually when most of the uh, plasticity is occurring. That's when the brain is remodeling itself, repeating skills and even finding new ideas or connections between other ideas uh, such as in REM sleep, the dream phase. And now finally, the seventh and my favorite, so I saved it for last, the way that we can increase neuroplasticity directly in what's called self-directed neuroplasticity 
is meditation. And that's when you consciously train your mind in a certain way. In the ancient texts, it's said that whatever someone frequently thinks and ponders upon, that will be the inclination of their mind. It makes sense, right? If we're training a certain way of being in the world, we're thinking certain thoughts, we're more likely to repeat those thoughts in the future. We're, more, we're basically becoming that person, however we're thinking about things, however we're reacting to things. So we can actually train this ability consciously through what's called metacognition, becoming aware of our own mind and how it works, and then re-sculpt it so that we can change, well, really become whoever we would like. And um, simply through awareness and through uh, intention, we can, we can consciously mold the brain that we would like. It's kind of like going to the gym and getting stronger muscles. And research has shown that meditators have a stronger connection between their prefrontal cortex and the amygdala. And that's after eight weeks of training. So the implication there is that you become, you gain more self-regulation. You can kind of respond instead of reacting, uh, especially in stressful or um, emotional situations. In another fascinating study, it was found that 50-year-old meditators have brains that compared to non-meditators of the same age actually appear about seven and a half years younger uh, based on the gray matter vol volume. So these are interesting uh, studies that suggest that meditation is actually changing the brain. Although of course, in that case, it's correlation, it's not direct causation. But what's amazing is that the altered states in meditation the temporary ability to enter into these deep states of calm and bliss and uh, applied a sustained attention can become altered traits over time. In other words, the temporary state is training the brain and changing it so that even when someone's not meditating, they can start to naturally uh, have those states of mind. And then the question is, so how do we apply this? And there's over 300 different types of meditation according to one study. We're releasing a free course on YouTube. It's also on the FitMind app. And that's a month long program where I teach you the most effective meditation techniques that I've learned. I hope you'll join us for that. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, also download the FitMind app. And uh, yeah, I hope you'll join us for this course on how to uh, use self-directed neuroplasticity to make this a lifestyle, not just something you would do for five minutes a day, but actually a lifestyle of awareness and being in bliss. And I'll teach the science behind all of this and um, hope to see you there. Thank you.